What are you doing, Clay? What are you doing over there? I'll tell you what you're not doing. Sipping on this amazing beer from Evil Twin. Hey! Uh, we have the Imperial Biscotti Break Natalie. Pretty please with a cherry on top oh. variant. This is a double porter. So, it's what's pretty... the difference between a regular porter and a double porter? It's just like double. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. No. Wow. <laughs> well, <It, clears throat> once something goes imperial or goes double, it's more robust. And they really go for like higher ABV in general, mm -hmm. and just robust dark roasted flavors. It really and you get a lot. It's so rich. It's almost like you know how we made cold brew coffee today. It's almost mm -hmm. the same. Like the cold brew is such a good like it's a, such a concentrate. It really just brings out the richness in the coffee compared to brewing it normally. Yeah, you're getting a lot of intense flavors. Really kind strong. Of strong duking it out but it's still smooth it's it's uh it doesn't have any i don't know it has a little sour aftertaste but it's like a good like a like a cherry sour cherry sour eh? yeah fruity definitely fruity. dark chocolate cinnamon cinnamon a little bit of pineapple but it, it might fruity might be a better thing because it's like not quite only pineapple it's just like, I don't know, just like kind of citrusy. and. I get the cherry and I get the pineapple. What's great about beer tasting and the experience of chilling with a great beer is it's so subjective. And when you drink beer with friends, you're able to kind of understand, A, where they're coming from, discuss the flavors, discuss the beer, and also develop your palate. Yeah. with others and i tell you what it's also pretty economical to drink beer with friends just because you gotta be i don't know pretty rich to be drinking beers like this on your own i paid 16 dollars for this 22 ounce bomber so <clears throat> definitely wow. if you have friends amazing <laughs> <laughs> whoa you're so cool by Barnabas. the way he is a millionaire because <laughs> that's the only way you can afford anything but bud light yeah, basically. I, I mean, you know, if 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 I had sold my soul, uh, in, in, in a in in a game of hopscotch, um, I don't know if I'd be able to afford this beer. But luckily, I did sell my soul, and I tell you what, the devil pays well. <laughs> yes, he does. Minimum wage, baby. Minimum wage. <laughs> and by the devil, I I mean uh, the president. Or, or Obama. No, come on. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The president of the Beer Drinkers Association. Oh, of course, of course. Speaking of which, of, I want to try... Finland. Uh, what is it? Mad... Mad... Mad Topper? Hetty Topper? Hetty Topper. Is it good? Have you tried it? Because I saw that video you posted, why Hetty Topper isn't going big. Oh, and yeah, I actually yeah. Like, looked at the video. The Oh, dude, that's actually a radio program. Well, I looked Any at that, you, and then did I you listen at, to the radio program. I did, and then I looked also at the video. To the video, yeah. Of them like showing the guy I was like, listen, and it's also like I really think it's cool, like their whole thing where it's like in a can. It's not trying to be so fancy. It's just like you know what's enjoyable, a good beer. Yeah, and wait. that's just like what they're going for. So have you had it? I've had it. Is I've it had good? it like once or twice. The big thing with that, as you know, if you listen to the radio program, and if you didn't check out. Um, Check out this radio program. It's, I believe it's called, oh man, hold on, let me check. Huh. Checking Facebook now. Uh, there was a problem occurring with this page, so we're going to reload it. Hope you're cool with that. Since when is Facebook British? I don't know. Mm. Anywho, mm. Um, let's, let's check this out. Um... <laughs> The flavors get a little more distinguished and defined as it cools down. Well, as it, actually, as warms, it warms up, up I yeah. should say. Um, okay, so. <clears throat> Definitely a roasty flavor at well, the end. We can probably like put the link in the, probably. with the video. But it's called, the, the radio program is called The Unconventionals. 
And uh, there's also one about Lagunitas. The previous one's about Lagunitas, and that's also great. Um, but, yeah. Um, and the brew is the Alchemist. So, yeah, Heady Topper. It's pretty cool. I enjoy it, but you can only get it in Vermont. Oh, that sucks. Well, you got to understand, like, staying small. Like, they only distribute within something like a 10-mile radius. What um, do you think about sours? Because sours are, like, are you... Are you to the point where you can, like, you're like, mmm, sours? Or are you, like, still, like, getting... Because I, like, the first time I had the sour, I was like, this is good. But it's not something that I would specifically get. Except for, like, an experiment purposes, I guess. I don't know. It's just kind of, like, one of those things. Even, like, the same thing with, like, the Geisha coffee. Mm -hmm. Really good. But not something I would want to drink every day. Okay, so first off, you're wrong. And uh, I'm going to tell you why. No, I'm kidding. Um, here's the thing about sours. Sours, and I'm going to say this on the record that probably very few people are going to ever listen to. <laughs> sours are the new IPA. Sours are the new IPA. You're going to find everyone, you know, and, uh, and their cousin, probably... And his name might be Jed or not. Bottom line is, sours are the new IPA because IPA started off as that beer. It was like, oh, it's so extreme. And now you're going to, and you're already starting to see it because when one says sour, there's so many different styles of sour. For instance, there's a German style that's making a big comeback known as the Goza. And it's, it's a beer that is a bit sour and brewed with coriander and salt traditionally. And there's a lot of people doing a Goza, um, blood orange Goza in particular, um, from Anderson Valley. A lot of people like that stuff. Um, and also Westbrook's Goza. And Westbrook is actually the brewery that does a lot of Evil Twins stuff when it comes to when he, like, um, <coughs> when he decides that he's going to basically contract a brewery out to do his stuff he sends uh, a lot of it to Westbrook I think we can actually look oh, word. we can look on this bottle and it will say it was yeah yep see produced and bottled for evil twin at Westbrook Brewing Co Mount Pleasant South Carolina and Westbrook has some great stuff Westbrook did that utterly stout that we had for your birthday oh that was good yeah that was really good also, Clyde, you have to try the uh, the aged. Was it bourbon? It was the bourbon. Um, we had two of them. We had one Christmas. The Bourbon County Stout. Yes. Good luck. True. Like next year, maybe. Next year, seasonal. Next year, out. maybe. It's a seasonal release, and it's all sorts of limited. I mean, it's good. We had the vanilla rye, and then we also had a grumbler of the 2013, which was aged a year. Um, Bourbon County Stout, a lot of people seem to like it because basically you get you can get, if you get there in time, you can get a four-pack of it for 25 bucks, Word. and you can age them and then like drink two that year. They're good as agers, but I'm not going to lie. Like, I've had a lot better bourbon, uh, examples of a bourbon barrel-aged beer. What was the one you brought over? <sighs> Ugh, which, which the one that was like... Was there that, like, that breakfast stout you, you told me was really good? The breakfast stout is really good, but that's not a bourbon one. Oh. There was the one that you that was like a sipper that you brought over. Oh, you're talking about the one I brought, like, in the last month? Yeah. That was the, um... The Harveyston a la Dube. That was intense. That yeah. was like almost bourbon, really. Like, but it, well, here's the thing: the a la Dube is actually aged in Highland whiskey cast, so it's actually a single malt Scotch. Huh. So, I mean, bourbon, I do believe, is a type of whiskey, but it, yeah, Scotch is different. You got a lot of like peaty flavors with. Uh -huh. um, we had uh, the sixteen year. That was that was intense. Or no, we had actually. What do we have? I think we had the eighteen year or the twenty one year. No, we had the twenty one year. And I missed this. You did. Yeah, you definitely oh. did. Oh, it was pretty good. It was intense too. It definitely had the sting. It was it was delicious though. It was. 
I mean, I guess what is one of what is your go to beer? Like if you had like one beer you'd be like that you would go to every time. That's rough. Um as far as beer goes, I feel like to have a go to beer is is basically an act of saying like if I'm at a bar and like this is like my only choice kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If you're at a bar that's not really known for beer, but they had this one beer, that would be like where I'd choose a go-to. But that depends on the bar. We have so much variety going on and so much experimentation. To have a go-to beer is kind of missing missing the, the point the of, of the movement that's happening right now. Yeah. Um, but that's just my opinion, so... Uh, but I do really like that left hand nitro stout. So, oh, dude, it's like, to be honest, that's probably one of my favorites. <coughs> I've had it just is? because it's so solid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not one of those. Yeah, it's not in your face. It's not like it's not like super complex. It's mm-hmm. just good. Mm-hmm. It's just good. And that's kind of what comprises your go to. Yeah, something you can have At any more day. than one of. Yeah. Um. It's something like you don't even have to be in the mood for. It's something you don't really have to take time to really necessarily kind of like taste it. It's just like you can, you can really just I mean, drink. yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, you can drink it. It's delicious. It has the flavors. You can decide to dissect it if yes. you want. But if you don't, because you've already dissected it, and that's usually what I end up doing. So if I have had a beer a couple of times and I've dissected the flavors, after I'd say I'd say the first five sips, I just spend usually dissecting the beer and trying to pull out the flavors, and then mm-hmm. you know also letting it warm up, come back to it, see what's going on a little bit later in the mix. For sure, it's one that really when it when it warms up, it really brings out the roasted flavors, like the ending yeah. completely changed. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting like some sour. Mm-hmm sour and roasted but then again remember we did have this storing for probably um, i mean this is probably like <clears throat> more of the red cherry comes out too for sure mm. i probably had this just sitting there waiting to be drank for uh i don't know four or five months has it really been that long no i'm like <laughs> <laughs> Probably about seven years. years. Two days. Probably about 30 years.